Hey guys, Scott Brown from Connie and Dick Service Center here in Southern California. I've got a quick case study on an older vehicle. Uh, this is a GM product, vintage 1998. So this is kind of the beginning of the OBD phase. Uh, and uh, basically the reason I'm sharing this uh, video case study is because this was an ass kicker. And um, it comes down to the part that we put on the car was uh, not sufficient or not engineered quite right. But uh, I wanted to share with you the walkthrough, the process, uh, scan tool data, uh, scan tool um, techniques that I used on this vehicle to analyze. Um, been working on a lot of GM cars for many, many years. And uh, this vehicle came in, it's a 3.8 liter, uh, 98 Camaro, as I uh, indicated, came in with a P1404, that's EGR Pinto closed position error. So I you know, figured I'll, I'll take a look at this. Um, I go in, I can go into the bi-directional check with the Tech 2 and command the EGR valve open and close, key on engine off. And each time I can hear the valve actually go to the closed position and it's stuck at 14%, as you can see here on the scan tool. So I went ahead and pulled the valve off, inspected it to make sure there was no carbon or anything built up holding it, um, holding it open. Um, that wasn't the case. You could actually hear this valve. It, it, the valve had 198,000 miles on it. So um, I figured it's a slam dunk. We'll go ahead and just order a new valve and uh, replace it. So uh, we normally like to use all OEM equipment, OEM parts, and when my service advisor handed me the EGR valve, I saw it wasn't the actual um, you know, AC Delco part, but it was from a vendor that claims to be the DNA uh, part. And uh, Dave Hobbs, I, I hope that you do watch this and, and see what I'm, uh, what I'm after here. Um, I went ahead and uh, tested the, the new valve, I actually cycled it through, watched the, the air EGR uh, position, go right to 0% each time it went closed. Everything was good, it bolted it back together, thought that uh, this was a slam dunk, took the car out, drove it, it passed its test, and uh, life is good. Two weeks later, the vehicle shows back up and the customer says, hey, the, the check engine light is on again. So we go out and we query the check engine light and this time it's got a P0401 and that is insufficient flow. So, I uh, start checking it out and um, I grab the, uh, the EGR valve, um, or the, I grab the scan tool, basically cycle the, the EGR valve open and closed while it's running. And um, I, you can hear the engine is just, you know, it's bogging down and, and sounds like everything's working normally. We checked all the passages, everything was fine. But what uh, one of my techs walked by and he was listening to it while we were opening it up. And he, he thought he could hear like a leak or something. Um, and so I went ahead and put a stethoscope around the EGR valve and I can definitely hear something leaking when we exercise the valve open. So I pulled the valve off and looked and I, what I did see is that this valve came with a nice thin metal gasket. Uh, all the surfaces were clean, but there must have been a slight leak there. You could actually see a little bit of leakage. So. I went ahead and got a replacement gasket, the nice, heavy, thick, fibrous type gasket, put it back together, took it out and drove it, ran it, um, and it says passed. And what GM does on this, uh, this particular vehicle, or uh, this system, is that after, uh, as a technician aid, after you clear the DTC, during the next drive cycle, it will exercise this EGR valve up to 10 times uh, during deceleration. And this is to help the technician validate that they repaired the vehicle. So I took it out and drove it. This is what the, the screen looks like after my drive. And you can see the number of test counts that uh, took place and passed. And that was 10. Um, so, you know, I give the car back to the customer, said, I'm sorry, you know, we put a new gasket on it, sent him down the road. Well, it came back again. And this time I'm pissed. So I decided to, to Take a look, uh, take a deeper look, not utilizing the Tech 2 this time, but utilizing a software application called EFI Live. And um, some of you that have seen some of my videos before, I've, I've got some, a lot of history with EFI Live. It's a very uh, powerful tool. 
and it does very well on GM cars. So in this, uh, in this particular log here, you can see, look at the lower um, row of data and talk, looking at the top left of the lower row, we have EGR test count, we have the EGR command percentage, and then over on the right, we have a map in kilopascals, and then we have engine RPM. So again, I clear the DTC. This is with the, the replacement valve uh, that returned the second time with the light coming on. So I'm driving the car and going into deceleration uh, events, trying to get this thing to pass, um, you know, to, to count, count up. So you can see in this case, we're at zero uh, test counts. We're on decel. You can see the valve gets exercised and the map changes and it counts up one. It, it increments, it was happy. Um, and then it does it again and then it does it again, you know, and it, it looks, looks like it's happy. Um, but I had uh, previously asked the service advisor to go ahead and order me a new AC Delco valve because I did not, I, I didn't have a lot of faith in this particular valve. So um, we went ahead and put the AC Delco valve on the car and I wanna show you that road test. So here is the AC Delco valve. And again, the same data parameters all laid out. So here's a long, here's a, here's a drive and then a deceleration. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here and uh, go there. Okay, so here we're cl we close the throttle. You can see up in the top row, 16% and then boom, 0%. You can see the EGR gets bumped open slightly right there. Um, here it's closed. Our map is at 29 kilopascals. It opens it to 47% and we're at 48 kilopascals. Okay, and it increments up one, one test. It does it again on the same D cell, um, 46 kilopascals at 45%. And that was again from 29 kilopascals. So it liked that one. And then it looks like it tried to run the test a third time and, it, and it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't happy with that, so it didn't increment it up. But if we come all the way over here, you can see it, it ran the test a couple more times here, but this is on a, a longer D cell and you can see how many times it actually ran the test. And again, going from 29 kilopascals, 50% EGR and 43 kilopascals. So, and it counted up four, five and six and then again a, a seventh test there so here we're going from we're going up to about 50 percent egr and we're getting 44 kilopascals if we go back to this other test here we'll zoom in this looks like a a little bit longer d cell here so we'll zoom in it's running the EGR almost up to 50%, but it went, the manifold pressure is at 28 kilopascals and it's only going to 36 kilopascals. So um, I think that um, most of you get what I'm after here. This, this tool is very powerful because it allows you to look a little deeper, give you a little more resolution at uh, validating what's going on. So um, I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, you know, we put that, put that factory valve on, we put it back into service. It's been out for three weeks. We checked with the customer, everything is fine now. So looked at both valves physically, looked, everything looks normal, uh, but it uh, indeed has to have some sort of internal uh, calibration check or change. So it doesn't have the same flow characteristics as the, uh, the original. So anyhow, I hope this was beneficial to you. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.